Hey, Espoir, C calm down. I said it was just a game, didn't I? Look at how many times you've killed me. We stopped playing a long time ago. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir David, and today I'm going to play a game that pulls no punches and is called I Chase You and Hunt You Down for Sport. It's been a very stressful week for you lately. It just felt like everything around you kept closing in on you. It feels almost suffocating, like one wrong step and everything will come crashing down. You just needed to take some time to yourself, to clear your head, maybe to distract yourself from everything that's going on. And you decided that the best way to do that was to take a walk through the woods near your house. Walking alone in the middle of the woods seems stupid, you knew that. But at the same time, it's relaxing, surrounding yourself with nature. Just taking in the sights all around you. The soft chirping of the crickets, while the moonlight peeks through the trees to light up your path. This is just what you needed to calm down. Eventually, you had completely lost track of time. You have no idea how long you've been walking at this point. It's only when you hear the sound of grass rustling behind you that brings you back to your senses. Uh, what if I run? What if I just book it? Eh. You start booking it. You heard a weird noise, and you assume the worst. It's nighttime, so most likely all of the animals are asleep by now. It's not windy, so that couldn't have moved the grass. If it's a person, they probably mean bad news. I mean, I saw the title of this game. Either way, you thought it was better to be safe than sorry. Unfortunately for you, your assumption that it was a person was spot on. Whatever was following you is now chasing after you. Oh no! Don't chase me and hunt me for sport! That is exactly what I do not want to occur! Even worse, in your panic stupor, you failed to notice a stray root and trip. Ah! As you scramble to get up, you feel a sudden weight on your back, pushing you into the dirt below you. A hand reaches up to pet your hair. Oh! Well, hello! Cutie pie. That's a cute top. Let me borrow that top! I wanna borrow that top! Aw. Oh, are you trying to run away from me? You don't even know if I'm gonna hurt you or not. At least you're pretty comfy, though. Could you... Could you get off of me? Hmm. I don't really want to, though. How about this? If you hear me out, then I'll get off. It's not like you have much of a choice. Alright, what is it you wanted to say? Honestly, I was hoping I'd run into someone so I could do something fun with them. I didn't think I'd actually run into anyone tonight. But then I saw you. And I knew I had to go for it. He starts playing with his bat, swinging it back and forth and twirling it around as he talks. You see, I was looking for a, let's say, playmate to play with. He stops and looks you dead in the eye. I wanted to see how long it would take for me to catch them. A shiver went down your spine. Although he didn't outright say it, you think you knew what would happen if he caught you. I'd get well acquainted with that bat. So, are you up for the challenge? He pats your back before getting up. You begin charging through the woods. The destination doesn't matter, as long as it was away from him. Your thoughts are running all over the place with the absurdity of it all. All you wanted to do was clear your mind, and now you're running for your life. And not only that, but your pursuer is a pink rabbit boy. This is the type of thing that happens in horror stories. And anime! What are you supposed to do in situations like this? You're in the middle of the woods right now. Unless you can find someone who can help you, or a place with a reception, there was no way you were getting out of this. You have to get out of this forest. Where could you go first? Ah! How dare you. Oh well, I'll take that. It was easier to just follow the path in front of you. If there was a path, then that means it's got to reach civilization, eventually. As long as you can just keep out running him, it would be fine. For now, all you have to focus on is running. Left leg, right leg. Try not to trip. Don't panic at the footsteps behind you getting louder. Wait, they're getting louder? Ah! 
So, oh well. I'll, I'll take it. It's fine. It's fine. I wasn't ready. You learn from your mistakes. Subconsciously, you turn your head towards the noise behind you. He's right on your tail. You feel your heart jump out of your chest from the sight of him. It's enough to make you lose focus, stumbling over yourself. Oh no! You fall face first and hear the <laughs> rabbit boy laughing behind you. Oh no! <laughs> Looks like you tripped! You scramble to get back up, even though you know it's too late. You're stopped in your tracks when his foot slams down at the crook of your knee. Owie! Well, that was a bit boring. I was hoping you'd last longer. You just had to go and trip, didn't you? He digs his foot in deeper as he leans in closer. Do you want me to give you another chance? He can hardly contain his giggling. It's like this is the funniest thing he's ever seen. A hand reaches up to grab your hair and yanks your head back. Your back is arched in an uncomfortable way, with your chest hovering off the ground and your knee still pinned. I hate to break it to you, but I think you're out of lives. You feel a splitting pain in your skull before everything turns black. Ow! You ran out of lives. Aw, oh, man. Okay, what if... What if I turn around? You turn around to see what's behind you. You were a bit wary on whoever it was going to be, but you were definitely not expecting to see a person with a bat donned in pink with... Are those bunny ears? Maybe a picture would last longer, sweetheart. He dawned on a big smile and started to catch up to you. All right, what, what you got? What's 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 all this? What's all, what's all of this about, Bunny Man? Although he does seem a bit off, he doesn't come across as hostile. You wait for him to get closer. My, I didn't expect anyone to be out here this late. Must be my lucky day. <laughs> You can call me Sable, if I can get your name, too. I am Espoir. It means hope in French. Oh, I haven't met an MC before. That's a first. He takes a step closer. So, MC. Why are you calling me MC? What are you doing out so late? Um, taking a walk, actually. Honestly, I just needed to clear my mind. I thought taking a walk would help. The woods do look beautiful at night. Aw, I'm sorry if you've got a lot of stuff going on right now. If you'd like, I wouldn't mind distracting you from your problems. Sure. What are, what are, what are you offering, friend? You know what? I'd actually like that. It sounds fun. Did you have anything in mind? Oh, of course I do. I'm surprised you even heard me out for this long. So, let's play a game. He swings the bat over his shoulder. I play this game all the time. It's called... I chase you and hunt you down for sport. Oh, so you, you play this game all the time. Okay, okay, that's the name of the game, okay. You won't have to worry about all of your other problems, except for this one. Sounds fun, right? And since you've been so nice to me, I'll even give you a 10 second head start. Uh, wait, maybe I should save my game because I... Alright, I'm gonna start running, but I'm gonna call his bluff. What are you ta talking about, friend? Haha, <laughs> you're joking, right? Nope. You should start running. Dissuade him? I don't think that's gonna work. Hey, maybe we could talk about this. I don't think that would be such a good idea, you know? Chasing and hunting me down for sport. Why not? I think it sounds like a fun idea. It really gets the adrenaline pumping, you know? Okay, sure. It may sound fun to you, but I don't really like the sound of that idea as much. Maybe we could find some other way to distract me? Hmm. Oh, I get it. You just want to skip to the end, right? What? No! Ah! Before you realize it, his bat slams into your temple, knocking you on the ground. Well, I wish we could have stretched this out for longer, but this is fine too, I guess. W wait! It wouldn't give you any time to react. He just kept smashing the bat against you. 
It's hard to think of doing anything else with the splitting pain in your skull. All you can think to do was to bring your arms up to try to lessen the blows against your body. Then he stops for a second. He swiftly kicks your stomach. Why are you being so mean, bunny man? You feel all the air escape your lungs. Did I do something to you? Or no, you may maybe you're just a little creep. That that's it. You're just it, it, it's it's not it's nothing personal. You're just a creep. Gosh, you know you stinker. Before you could recover, he digs his heels into your shoulder, pinning you to the ground. He bends down and leans into your face. Now that's no fun, is it? Keep your arms down. He straightens up, raising the bat over his head. Well, I guess it's about time we finish this, don't you think? He swings it down, and everything goes black. You couldn't convince him. Ow. Alright, what if I start running? And this time, I'm gonna pay attention. Go off the path, haha. -ha. You immediately run off the path and tread deeper into the forest. Hopefully you'll be able to lose him in the trees. Getting lost to yourself isn't as big as a problem, as opposed to the literal killer that's chasing you. You dart left and right, bobbing and weaving between the abundance of trees. You know you won't be able to retrace your steps, but as long as you can lose Sable, then it'll all be worth it. Eventually, you come across a slight clearing where a river runs through. You slow your steps as you reach the end of it, then crouch down beside it. You look over your shoulder, staring back at the foliage that surrounds you for any flicker of pink. After some time, you're convinced that you've lost him, for now, but that shouldn't mean you should stay in one place. You have to keep moving, despite your legs burning. While you're here, you decide to take the opportunity to drink some water and rehydrate yourself before running again. You lean down and cup your hands to catch some water. Ah! How... How dare you, sir! Suddenly, you feel a hand grip your hair and push your head under the current. In a panic, you desperately try to lift your head up, despite being held down. Your arms swing and claw at the arm holding you down. Through your kicking and squirming, the hand on your head gets a firmer grip and pushes you further into the water. You're unable to hold your breath any longer and instinctively open your mouth, letting the water pour in. You can't stop the water from filling your lungs as you desperately try to fight against the person on top of you. Your vision starts to grow weaker, and eventually you stop flailing. How dare you! Ah! Oh, I was just getting a sip and you had the audacity! What? What is this guy's problem? Ugh. Dodged in time. You turn around and see Sable towering over you. Before he can grab you, you roll out of the way and then stumble onto your feet. You heard me? I thought the river would be too loud for you. Oh well, let's try this again, shall we? He picks up his bat from beside him and rushes at you. Quickly, you save your game. Haha, <laughs> I didn't see what all those said, but I clicked across the river. In a split-second decision, you dive out of the way towards the river. If Sable was willing to follow you across the river, it would take some time for him to trudge through the rushing currents. You're chancing that he'd be opposed to it, and you can escape freely. As you land in the water, you feel the weight of your clothes weighing you down. That wouldn't stop you, though. You're determined to get to the other side and away from your pursuer. It was deeper than you had thought, and the current was much stronger as well. Uh-oh. Your shoulders are barely peeking over the waterline. You struggle to keep yourself up from the rocks below. Oh, this isn't gonna end well now, is it? An especially bad wave catches you off guard when it slams into your face, causing you to slip on the rocks. You're immediately pulled underwater. The river's current has you tossing and turning as you're carried down the stream. Before you can catch yourself, the river always pushes you along. You panic as you start to lose your breath, unable to reach the surface for air. Water starts to fill your lungs as you desperately try to upright yourself. While it's true that you don't have to worry about Sable anymore, this wasn't how you wanted to get away. A second killer! <gasps> the river! I knew it! Oh golly. Oh golly. 
There's a lot of these. Okay. Challenge accepted. No. He tackles you to the ground, on your back, grabbing you by the hair and dragging you towards the edge of the river. You kick and scream the entire way, trying to make it more difficult for him. Once your head is dangling over the edge, Sable crawls on top of you and presses the edge of the bat against your neck. He pushes down on it, leading your head towards the water. Hey! Your hands reach up to grip the bat and fight against him. Ah! However, with the force of you pushing back, aiding his attempts, your head is slowly lowered under the surface of the water. When you realize you can't pry the bat off your neck, you start to swing wildly, hoping to hit him. You start to panic as you watch the bubbles rise from your mouth and nose. Eventually, you're unable to fight as you let the water take you. Gosh darn it! Right, what if I intercept him? Seeing him trying to tackle you, you lower yourself and rush at him as well, aiming for his stomach. You are able to get the upper hand once you collide and catch him off guard. You successfully tackle him to the ground, causing him to drop his bat on the way down. The two of you struggle against each other as he tries to push you off of him. You reach for the bat and smack him upside the head. What? Well, While he's stunned, you drop the bat and drag him towards the river. Uh-oh. It may seem cold-hearted, but this man has been trying to kill you all night. It's time for him to get a taste of his own medicine. You grab a fistful of his hair and dunk his head under the water. You watch his bubbles rise to the surface, and he begins to squirm under you. It takes some effort to hold him down, having to put your whole weight and sheer will into it. You will be showing this guy no mercy after what he put you through. Eventually, his squirming dies down, and he lays limp underneath you. You peek to get a look at the river. No bubbles. You finally let go of his head and crawl off his body. Take his bat! Take his bat too! Now you have to deal with a dead body on your hands. You grab his legs and start shuffling the rest of his body into the river. You stand there as you solemnly watch the bright pink color flow down the river until it's out of sight. You drowned him. Ha ha! That's what you get for messing with me. If you call down the hands, you'll get thrown in the sea. Okay, let's see. I turned around. I ran. What if I ignore it in the beginning? You decide to ignore it. You're in the woods. It could very well just be a rabbit or something. You shouldn't add on to your list of things to worry about. You're stopped, dead in your tracks, once you feel a pair of arms wrap around your waist. The figure behind you leans into your ear and whispers... Why, hello there, sweetheart. Uh, what if I stay still? You stay still. You're too scared to move. You don't know who this person is, but you reason it'd be better not to aggravate them. Aw, oh, are you scared? How cute. I can practically feel you shaking in my arms. He hugs you tighter and rubs his face into the crook of your neck. Here, maybe this will help. He turns you around, keeping sure to not let you out of his grasp. Now you can see the face of your captor. Immediately, the first thing that strikes you is how pink this man is. As well as the bunny ears. See, I won't hurt you. Yet. I don't look that scary, do I? I just looked really briefly and I thought this said break his arms. Can I pet your ears? Can I- can I pet them? The man's entire face lights up. Oh! Yes! Of course you can! He gives you space to lift your arm up to reach his ears. They must be one of the softest things you've ever felt in your life. You can't stop yourself from rubbing your fingers through its fur. When you look at his face, you can see he has the whitest, goofiest smile and his cheeks are flushed. He's brimming with excitement. You can't help from smiling a little yourself. Eventually, you stop. You would pet them forever if you could, but it would probably be a better idea to figure out what this man is about before continuing. You don't even know his name yet. Did you like them? Were they soft? His happiness is almost infectious. You chuckle to yourself for a second before you speak. 
<laughs> yes, they are really soft. Oh, I'm glad you think that, sweetheart. Uh-oh. He's got the hard eyes, oh no! He gives you another tight squeeze before finally letting you go. Oh, you know, maybe I could get your name so I can stop calling you sweetheart. Although, I wouldn't mind calling you that all the time. As for me, you can call me Sable. Uh, what if I dodge the question? <laughs> you know, I could ask you the same thing. It seems kind of odd for someone to be cosplaying as a rabbit while carrying a bat with them. What's cosplay? The two of you look at each other in confusion. Whatever. If you're interested in what I'm doing here, I could tell you. But that means you gotta play along too, okay? Um... Sure... Go ahead. What did you have in mind? You see, I was looking for a, let's say... Playmate. Uh, start running. <laughs> ah, wait. Editor to me. Go back. Oh wait, no. Editor to me. Don't go back. You start to panic as you watch the bubbles rise from your mouth and nose. Eventually, you're unable to fight as you let the water take you. Eh? Eh? In a swift motion, you're thrown out of the water and onto the ground next to Sable. You begin to cough up water, but are still drained from the experience of drowning. He kneels beside you and starts to rub your back. What? This is different, what? Shh, that's it. Let it all out. You did so good, sweetheart. You're barely listening to him, more focused on getting air into your lungs. He continues to stroke your back until you've settled down. He brings both of his hands to your face and cups your cheeks. You look so cute like this, Espoir. Let's get you home now, okay? Your body is too tired from all the running and from the near-death experience. You don't fight back when Sable takes you into his arms. He lifts you off and begins to carry you deeper into the forest, occasionally looking down to admire you. If anything, the gentle bobbing of him walking is starting to lull you to sleep. You press yourself against his body as you doze off. You fell asleep in his arms. Okay, I guess that's a survive ending. I guess because I got him to like me, he, uh, he, he did outright kill me, okay. Okay, what if what if I'm really nice to him and flirt with him and touch his cute little ears and then say, no, I, I don't want to be chased and hunted for sport friend. As much as I appreciate the offer, I think I'm fine dealing with it myself. Oh, well, are you sure I can't help in some way? Yeah, I'm sure. Anyways, it was nice to meet you, Sable. I hope you have a good rest of your night. I'll be on my way now. You start walking back the way you came, leaving him dumbfounded. Sure, Sable seems like a nice guy, but if you had to be honest with yourself, there was something about him that irked you. Especially with the way of how insistent he was. Ah! Suddenly, you're knocked off your feet and tackled to the ground. You feel the weight on top of you lean in closer. I'm not about to let you go off the hook that easily, sweetheart. He flips you over, onto your back, while straddling you. He grips your face, digging his nails into your cheeks, and pulls you toward him to look you in the eyes. See, this is how it's gonna go. I'm gonna let you up, then we're gonna see how far you can last. Think you can outrun me? You are a boonie! I assume that you are very fast! Well, we're about to find out. He pushes your head onto the ground before finally letting you go. He begins to stand up. You begin charging through the woods. Don't panic at the footsteps behind you getting louder. Wait, they're getting louder? Keep going straight! Don't look back! Don't look back like I did last time! You can't look back. If you look back, then you're going to start panicking. And if you start panicking, you're going to fluff up. You push yourself to pick up the pace. You're not sure how long this path is, but by God, it better be short. 
If you have to keep running at this pace, you're not sure if you'll be able to last. You need to think of something fast. Too caught up in your own thoughts, you fail to notice Sable catch up to you. You lose your balance when he swipes your legs with his bat. Ah! You fall, face first, and hear Sable laughing behind you. Oh no! <laughs> Looks like you tripped. You feel a hand reach up to your hair and brace for impact. Instead of yanking your head back, he starts caressing your hair. You stay still. You're not sure what to make of the situation. Is he really giving you another chance? You hear another little giggle from behind you, followed by him humming. You know, I'm not sure what it is about you, but I think I really might go easy on you. If I kill you now, then we can't have more fun in the future, can we? With one last pat, his hand leaves your head. You feel him settle on top of you before his hands reach up to your throat and squeeze. Hey! Just bear with me for a bit longer, Espoir. I can't have you know where we're going, after all. Where we're going? Is he going to take you? You start to panic, bringing your arms up to try to pry his hands off your throat. He just pushes deeper into you, while letting out soft shushes to soothe you. It's not working as intended, instead causing your heart rate to spike. You struggle underneath him, trying to get away. But eventually, your vision starts to spot, and you feel your arms go limp. No! You were given another chance. Well, I guess technically I survived. Okay, what if I don't completely miss that, uh, timed thing? Go off the path? You have to catch him off guard. At the rate that it's going, you're never going to get the chance to sneak up on him. That only left one option, and it was going to hurt. You immediately hold in your steps, sending Sable flying straight into you and knocking you both to the ground. You both groan from the harsh impact. As you kneel up, you watch as he clutches the side of his arm. He seems to have taken the brunt of the damage from the two of you. More importantly, his bat is laying a few feet away from him. Ooh. You immediately dive for the bat. It seems to be his only weapon, and you're sure as heck weren't about to let him take it again. Sable was caught up worrying over his scrapped arm to react in time to stop you. Now you have the bat. You grip both hands around the handle, preparing to swing it when necessary. You begin to cautiously step towards Sable. Even though he was unarmed, he still seemed like a threat to you. Hey, Espoir! C calm down! I said it was just a game, didn't I? Look at how many times you've killed me! We stopped playing a long time ago! I never said I was gonna kill you! Oh, I'm not going to kill you either! I'm just gonna bash your brains in! I'm just gonna bash your little brains in! Respectfully. You'd be surprised what you can live through. So just... put down the bat, alright? Attack him! Nope! Attack him! Get him! Get him! He called the hands! Full, fluffing, mailed. You weren't going to take any chances. Him pleading for you to stop took away any sense of power that he had over you. You've made up your mind. Why do I have a feeling that this is going to backfire? You had to kill him before he could kill you, or anyone else for that matter. You weren't in the right mind to think of any possible consequences in the future, but that didn't matter right now. With all your strength, you swung the bat into the side of his head. You watch him fall over, weakly bringing a hand to his forehead. You're surprised that didn't knock him out. That's okay. You can always try again. You bring the bat down on him once again while he's distracted. He's still moving. He glances up at you fearfully, mumbling something under his breath while trying to use his remaining strength to scooch away from you. Whatever he's saying, you could care less. You take another step closer to him and continue smacking his head until he finally stops moving. Yes! No! You're not sure if he's still alive after that, but it's safe to say he's dead at this point. You stand there for a bit, taking in the sight before you. The tall, lanky man, once colored pink, 
is now dyed with red. He lays lifeless on the floor with his head caved in. You just killed someone, but it hasn't really sunk in just yet. You glance at the bat in your hands, covered in stickers, charms, and blood from the men you just killed. Keep the bat. I think I'm gonna keep this. It's cute. You walk up to Sable, taking the time to wipe off the excess blood from the bat on his crop top. Although it doesn't quite do the job, it's good enough for now. You take your newly obtained prize and head home. Battered down, yeah! Ah, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm a murderer. But then again, he's probably killed a whole bunch of people, so they, they'll probably like, Oh, a murderer got killed with his own murder weapon, huh? Alright, more importantly, his bat is laying a few feet away from him. Alright, what if I try to attack him with my bear, my bear paws? You weren't sure if you'd have enough time to grab the bat. You have to do this now, or it might be too late. You lunge on top of him and knock him back to the ground. You don't give him a chance to react before you sock him in the face. BAM! Just like, BAM! Like, real quick, real quick, just BAM! You swing back for another punch when Sable hits you in the chin. Ow! Your vision starts to spin, and before you know it, he's pushed you off of him. You're trying to keep your bearings when you feel a blow against your back, knocking you back to the floor. Well, I gotta say, it was a good shot. But not good enough. He flips you onto your back before pressing the tip of his bat against your neck. Dang it! He leans against his bat, watching your eyes shoot wide open as you start to choke. You claw against the bat and try to knock it out of place. He plants his feet onto the ground and digs the bat further into your neck to make it more difficult for you. As you look up, all you can see is a look of infatuation on his face as he watches the color of your skin turning blue while you struggle to gasp for air. You feel your heart drop into your stomach and your vision begins to fade out. You're alluring. Okay. Alright, what if I- what if I run away? Just forget- forget punching him in the face, forget the bat. Now is your chance. You started sprinting in the direction of your house, away from Sable. While you weren't sure where the other side of the path led to, you knew where this end went. Sure, you had lost track of time while you were walking, but you couldn't be that far away from your house, right? You just had to keep running, even if your lungs started burning and your legs were aching. You just needed to outpace him. If you could get through this, then you could rest. But for now, you just kept running. All you could focus on were the sounds of your own breath, the beating of your own heart, the pulsing of your blood. You didn't hear him catch up to you. Ah! You feel a sharp force impale the side of your ribs as Sable brings the bat down, sending you tumbling to the ground. As you try to prop yourself up, you feel like you can't breathe. There's just searing pain in the side of your chest and your left ankle. You're sure he's broke some ribs, and even worse at the moment, you had sprained your ankle during the fall. Sable swings the bat against your back, knocking you back onto the ground. Huh. Well, that's a new one. Didn't think you'd flat out just stop in the middle of running. That hurt, you know? My arms all scraped up because of you now. He sounded like he was pouting, as if he wasn't in the middle of attempting to kill you right now. I just wanted to return the favor. But, you know, I'm not quite satisfied yet. You can handle a little more, can't you? You watch him prepare to take another swing and brace for impact. He brings it down on your side again, in the same place he had hit you before. You scream out in pain. He's practically reveling in it, the smug look on his face morphing into one of depravity. He continues to bring the bat down on you. He could have hit you anywhere else, but favored to hit that same point over and over again. When you had brought your arms to protect your chest, he'd merely kick them away as if they were an inconvenience to him. Owie! You don't know when you passed out from the pain, but you didn't wake up after that. You can't run forever. Well, I tried. All right, hold on. Give me that bat. Give me that bat. I tried to attack him. I could thre uh, threaten him. Let's break his leg. You have to do this quickly, before he could try anything. 
You speed up your steps and try to get him while he's still on the ground. Sable notices your increased pace and begins to let out a string of pleas that fall on deaf ears. You need to stop him from following you, and there's only one way to do it. Once you're within reach, he starts kicking at you to distance yourself from him. Ah, I missed it. You try to reach out to grab one of his legs, but each time, his kicks would land. You start to get a bit reckless due to your frustration, and leaned in to get a better grip on him. This only gave him access to kick your face. Once you're dazed and clutching your nose, Sable leans forward and pins you to the ground. You scramble to lift the bat and hit him, but he's able to grip onto the other end before it lands. The two of you wrestle for the bat. He grabs both sides of your face and slammed his forehead against yours. Reeling from the pain, he takes the opportunity to snatch the bat from your hands. Aw, oh, man! He brings it up and slams it back down against your skull before you black out. Ending, you couldn't catch his leg. Oh, I'm gonna get them legs now! Despite his flailing, you're able to catch one of his feet. You yank it towards yourself to get him to lose his balance. Then, you pin it to the ground with your knee and raise your bat. A look of recognition finally crosses his face. Hey! Wait! 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 A loud crack fills the air, followed by Sable's screams as you bring the bat down right on his kneecap. Ooh! He keels over, clutching his leg. You stand up and walk away as you try not to pay attention to his sobbing. You didn't want to look at him, whether it due to guilt or anger. You needed to make sure he wouldn't follow you. He was going to get the help he needed for his leg anyways, after you would call the police on him. That was the plan anyways. Sure, I, I was just gonna leave him in the forest so he could think about what he did, but yeah, sure. But first, you'd have to get home. You broke his leg. Ha! Uh, that's what you get. Alright, what if I'm not so ruthless and just threaten him? Your hands were shaking. Sure, he was trying to kill you, but you weren't sure if you had the heart to kill someone yourself. Especially if it was going to take multiple attempts to do so. You held the bat up higher as if you were going to strike and watched Sable flinch. If you get up, I swear to God, I will not hold back. Sable frantically nods his head up and down. Good. Now, I'm going to leave, and you are not going to come after me. I'm the one with the weapon here. Don't test me. All right, I won't follow you. You shuffle around Sable, refusing to take your eyes off of him, until your back is turned towards the direction of your house. You start backing up, still staring at him. I'm watching you! Am I gonna fall backwards and, like, bust my own scalp? He just sits there and watches you walk away. When you're sure he's not going to come after you, you finally turn around and walk forward. On your way, you decide to get a closer look at his bat. It's covered in cute bunny stickers and little charms. It's odd to think that this belonged to a murderer. You're not sure what to do with it, now that you have it. Ah, I didn't dodge. Suddenly, Sable grabs you from behind and holds you in a headlock. You should have been more careful, sweetheart. Just because you threaten me doesn't mean I'm going to listen to you. It surely didn't help your case when you were shaking the entire time. I just want to see what happens if, if you miss all of these. You try to hit him with the bat while he's behind you, but you can't get the angle right. Your body starts feeling weaker, and all you can think about is the need for air. You give up on the bat, letting it fall to the ground, as you instead focus on clawing at the arm around your throat. Doesn't he have a wound? Go for the wound! Work the wound! You can hear the sounds of Sable laughing get fainter and fainter <laughs> as you eventually pass out. No! You suffocated. No! How dare you! Dodge. Dodge smoothly! At the last second, you notice the presence behind you and swiftly step to the side. You watch the rabbit boy dive to the ground in an attempt to tackle you. He clenches his fists in the dirt under him and glares at you. Fluff! Espoir, stay still! Ah! I missed the second dodge! These are so fast! You're caught off guard when Sable had thrown dirt in your eyes. You cry out and go to clear your eyes. Now blinded, you don't notice Sable coming up to knock you off your feet. Ow! You fall to the floor and feel him pry the bat out of your hands before smacking you in the head with it. 
Ow! You feel your body meet the ground, and are met with Sable resting his foot on top of your head, pushing your face further into the dirt. Well, Espoir? Although, that was a bit annoying. I still found it fun. I'm sure we can call this a game over now, don't you agree? To your surprise, you feel his foot lift off of you. Unsure of what he's going to pull next, you cautiously push yourself to your knees, only to be met with Sable holding his hand out. Before you get the chance, he leans down to grab your hand, then yanks you to your feet. You take a moment to regain your balance. He's still holding your hand. You attempt to tug your hand back, but are stopped when his grip gets tighter. What? You still scared of me? Just because the game is over doesn't mean I'm going to let you go. There's always next time, after all. And I don't think I want you to leave just yet. N next time? You're going to have to do this again? Now, there's two ways we can go about this. Are you going to come willingly? Or am I going to have to make you? Uh... Uh... Let's... Da, 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 no! No, 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 no. Get out of his grasp. Get... No. Mm -mm. You don't even answer him. In your panic, you start to tug against his arm even harder, just trying to distance yourself from him. Oh, sorry, but I'm afraid that's the wrong answer. <laughs> Ouch! He quickly swings the bat against your head, and you're immediately knocked out. Ending. You get to play again. Fine. What, what if I go with him? Sure. Let's go. You're too afraid to find out what would happen if you say no. Well, he's holding the bat, and obviously you're just gonna get batted in the face. I'll... I'll go with you. Oh, sweetheart. I'm so glad to hear you say that. You... You can feel him almost quivering with excitement. It's unnerving. He pulls you into a hug, holding you there for a bit too long. When he finally pulls away, he begins to drag you deeper into the woods. Okay, I missed the first dodge, but maybe I can hit him. You swing the bat behind you and are able to hit Sable in the head. His grip on you loosens, allowing you to slip out. Finally noticing you escaped, Sable haphazardly lunges at you. You swing the bat without a second thought, knocking him in the head and sending him to the ground. He lays there, unconscious, and you take this opportunity to finally get away. Finally, he'd stop attacking you. You continue in the direction of your house, hoping to call the police on him before he could get up and attack you again. Although it wasn't ideal, it was the best thing you could do for now. You knocked a biscuit out! Ha! <laughs> Woohoo! I just need to die two more times. Going all the way back, and uh, huh, there's something strange behind me. I should just start running out of the blue. And then he catches you anyway. Instead of saying, could you get off of me? I could say, are you going to hurt me? Huh? Oh. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I don't know what I expected. At least, at least he's honest about it. Going all the way back to the beginning again. If I ignore it, and then he grabs me, instead of standing still like a moron, what if I try to break free from him? You immediately smack away their arms and put some distance between yourself and the figure, before turning around to confront them. You're met with a lanky man dressed in pastel pink with... bunny ears? Huh. I didn't think you'd get that scared. <laughs> Well, you shouldn't be going around hugging random people. I thought it would be fun to surprise you. This guy is weird. And seeing that you're the only two people around here, you don't like where this situation is going. Sorry, but to be honest, I don't really feel comfortable with all of this. So I'm just gonna mind my own business, and you mind yours, okay? You turn around and continue going down the path. As much as you'd rather start heading home, you don't like the idea of having to walk past him to do so. Hopefully he'll just leave and you can head back later. You hear the rushing footsteps behind you and were able to step out of the way, just in time to see a rabbit boy come crashing into the earth. He slams his fist into the ground before looking up at you with rage in his eyes. Hey, it's not my fault that I have ninja skills sometimes. 
Gosh darn it, Fluff. Hey, calm down, honey. He tries to collect his bearings as he starts to stand up. You begin charging through the woods. <laughs> he clenches his fist in the dirt under him and glares at you. Fluff, stay still. You're caught off guard when he had thrown dirt in your eyes. You cry out and go to clear your eyes. Now blinded, you didn't notice him coming up to knock you off your feet. You fall to the floor and feel him pry the bat out of your hands before smacking you in the head with it. Ow! You feel your body meet the ground and are met with the rabbit's foot resting on top of your head, pushing your face further into the dirt. Well, sweetheart, although that was a bit annoying, I still found it fun. I'm sure we can call this a game over now, don't you agree? As you try pushing yourself back up, the pressure of his foot increases to keep you pinned. Oh, he doesn't help me up this time. You can't see his face, but you are getting the feeling that he enjoyed watching you squirm like this. Hehe. <laughs> Don't move now. I've always wanted to try this. You feel the pressure lift from your head. Before you can move out of the way, his foot comes crashing down at the back of your skull. You cry out in pain instinctively, letting some dirt and grass into your mouth. You once again feel the absence of his foot, before he brings it back down again. Seriously? Curb stomping? Is that what you're resorting to? Each time feels worse than that. You are almost a bit glad when you couldn't feel it anymore. You are blinded. Rude. On your way, you decide to get a closer look at his bat. It's covered in cute bunny stickers and little charms. It's odd to think that this belonged to a murderer. You're not sure what to do with it, now that you have it. At the last second, you notice the presence behind you, and swiftly step to the side. Once again, you watch the rabbit boy dive to the ground in an attempt to tackle you. <laughs> to get this ending, you've gotta, like, dodge out of his way. Twice. Even more enraged than before, clenches his fist in the dirt under him, and he bares his teeth at you while springing up. You've got to stop doing that! This week in the news, Ho's mad. Ho's mad. <laughs> no. Oh, well, I was supposed to miss that one anyway. <laughs> You're caught off guard when Sable had thrown dirt in your eyes. You little fluffer. You've really teed me off, you know. You made me go flying everywhere. You're supposed to be the one flying everywhere, not me. After each sentence, he would press down even harder, as if he couldn't hold himself back. But you better believe I'm going to have my fun with you now. You felt his foot finally lift off of your head, only to be met with the sharp pain of his bat slamming against the back of your neck. You felt the pain shoot down your spine like a surge of electricity. The thought of trying to get away was quickly diminished as he brought his foot back on top of your head, pressing down on it to keep you in place as he brings his bat down again. He was practically roaring with every swing he took. Oh. You mad? You mad, bro? Eventually, you heard one last roar and a snap before everything went dark. Ending. You peed him off. Ha <laughs> ha! Woohoo! That's all the endings. I did have to turn to the walkthrough for the last two. Thank you so much for putting a walkthrough in there. Well, that was... I chase you down and hunt you for sport. Pretty much says everything you need right, right then and there. And Sable, he's a little stinker. <laughs> he's definitely a little stinker. But I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Well, I think that's enough getting my brains bashed in by a bunny boy for one night. And as always, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself. Have a great night. And remember, there is always hope.